we are live on Facebook. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. Today, we are talking about new beginnings. As you all know, I'm from Brazil. <laughs> my birth name is Yuri, but you can call me Alex, <laughs> as it is my social name as well. <laughs> but anyway, I live in Foz do Iguaçu, but I was born in Manaus City. Since 2020, I've been interviewing people in order to get to know them, their stories, their lives. And I know that every person can impact someone else. And today we wanna to talk a little bit about new beginnings. As we are transi transitioning to 2023, what's ahead? Not just that, probably you are transitioning to a new lifestyle, routine, career. How can you transition well? So we're going to talk a little bit about new beginnings in today's session. And our guest today is a special person from the United States. This is my friend, and he is, uh, he is a part of my circle of influence. And it's a pleasure to be with you today, Jim. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you, Yuri. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Yes, I I am I am one of those guys who's been around the world and and done a lot of things and have had a lot of experience and and really just enjoy sharing how uh this journey that I've been on can be of value to others and it's been a pleasure to be a mentor uh for you, you're in for some many others out there, but I I you know, I've been I've done a lot of things. I've served in the military. I've worked in federal governments. I've worked uh, in private sector and public sector. So I've done a lot of different things over my my career. I've coached. I've trained. I've been a public speaker. In fact, I continue to do that even today. But one of my passions, one of the things that really gets me up in the mornings, is the ability to share with others to help them on their journey to becoming their best versions. And I think your subject and your topic today is one that's very important as we think about new beginnings and starting a new year and how we can step out in the right direction, uh, wherever you are and wherever you are in your journey, because we all have an opportunity to go to that next level, wherever you start, and that's the key, is you start where you are and you go from there. You don't focus on the past, you focus on what's out there in the beginning. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that I do at the end of the year, some of the things that we've been taught through the John Maxwell program, some of the things that John himself does, and how it can help us in our journeys forward. And I think that's that's the important thing is to how can we move forward in a positive way? So uh, honored to yeah. be with you today and look forward <laughs> to sharing uh, some insights with your audience on uh, preparing for the next steps. Absolutely. And it's a pleasure to be with you because we all know your experience is really valuable. And I have a question. My first question to you is, what does a new beginning mean to you? Is it a new blank life, a new opportunity? It, it can be that, Yuri. It can be a brand new starting point, or it could be where you are and you just want to improve that part of your journey. Uh, I, some years ago, um, it's been probably, was 2014, I started a brand new page, a new page, a blank slate. I started over, you know, I had, I had worked all my life. And in 2014, I said, Hey, I'm done with this. I, I want to do what Jim Hatchell enjoys doing. And my passion was to coach and train others and help them on their journey. So I took a leap of faith and I started something completely new. And that's my business today is Palmetto Leadership. But that doesn't mean you have to stop where you are and start something new. You can start where you are right now and shape it so that it improves over the next days ahead to make it better down the road. 
Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it is like the artist with a new canvas and starting over and with, with new colors and new ideas and new thoughts. But for some of us, it's just adding to what we've already started. For example, I mean, with my coaching and training, I'm not going to quit that and start over. But at the same time, as I look forward, what are the things that I did last year that I could have done better? What are the things that I didn't do that I need to start doing? What are the things that I did that didn't help me and that I need to stop doing? So those are the things that I look at when I start thinking about my next year, the beginning of this part of my journey. Absolutely. Fantastic, Jim. And what are some of the habits that you, you acquire once you begin something new? How, what's, how does that work in your mind? Well, I mean, we all have good habits and we all have bad habits. And the first thing that I try to do is I try to eliminate the bad habits. You know, John Maxwell talks about in his book, Intentional uh, Living and uh, the, the, the uh, 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. He talks about being intentional in everything that we do. And he talks about eight gaps. And those eight gaps in there are things that are habits that we have developed over our lives that prevent us from doing the things that we need to do. So we need to identify the habits that are preventing us from getting to the point where we need to go. Now, I do a lot of work with the, the, the procrastination terminology. I like to, to say I'm so good at procrastination, I can teach that. But procrastination is nothing more than a habit. And if it is a habit, then we can create actions and steps to replace that bad habit with good steps and good habits. And so we have to identify those. It's just like I was saying, you know, what did I, what did I do last year that I need to stop doing that's going to help me move forward in my next year, uh, in my next part of my journey? So we all have to identify those habits. And I, I often recommend to my clients, I said, okay, let's talk about the things that prevent you from reaching the successes that you desire. And when we can identify those habits, we can start to say, okay, how do we replace them? Because you can't eliminate habits. They, they're there forever, but you can replace the actions of the habit with habits that will help you overcome that. One of the biggest ones for me, biggest ones for me is, in fact, procrastination, because there are so many things in my life at this point in time where I could easily make an excuse for not doing the actions that I need to move my business forward, but take actions to go visit my grandkids or go to the yeah. golf course or the driving range or some action that really is not helping me move forward. And I don't want that to become the norm, I want that to be the anomaly where I take time off to go visit them so I can stay focused in the things that I need to stay focused in. So, so habits, clearly understand what your habits are. So John talks about eight gaps. Let me just share this real quick, yes. because I think it's important, is, is we think about uh, being intentional we assume that things are just going to happen for us. Well, that's not always the case. When we make assumptions, which is a bad habit, is that we just assume that something's going to happen. We still have to step up and make take the steps to get that done. And then we think, well, this is not the right time. Well, when is the right time? You know, we put things off saying, well, right now is the not, not the right time. But Mel Robbins wrote a great book. I don't know whether you've heard about heard of Mel or not, but she wrote a great book called The Five Second Rule. And she says, hey, listen, when you got something to do, just do it. Five, four, three, two, one, and go take the actions that are required. And then there's one of the biggest problems that we all deal with is this perfectionism thing. Perfectionism is nothing more than a bad habit because when we try to do things wait to, to do things when we can do it perfectly, we'll never do them because we are not perfect. We are all imperfect and we're never going to do anything perfect. We might do it really, really, really good, 
but perfection is only accomplished by one person and it's not you or me. It's a greater power than all of us put together. So we know that as a fact. So the next thing is that there's a comparison gap. And this is one Yuri, you and I have talked about uh, our, our little group that we get to get. We talk about it and you know, that comparison, trying to compare ourselves to what other people are doing. We can't compare ourselves to anybody else. It's, it's only about what we can do. And if we start comparing ourselves, which is a really bad habit, and I know a lot of people that struggle with, well, Yuri's doing this, or Jim's doing that, or Mike's doing this, or Paul is doing this, or Billy's doing this. You know, we got to think about, okay, what am I doing? What is it that I can do? I can't depend on anybody else's actions. I got to do what I got to do and move forward and not compare myself to others. And then you have to be able to say, well, I... You know, I've got to go out and learn. You, I, I love where you are, Yuri, because I know that you're you're in this learning process and I've watched you grow and I've seen you uh, evolve into the person that you are today. We all have to have that knowledge to that we're willing to step up and go out and learn. There's nothing that prevents us from learning today because we have so many tools and opportunities out there. I mean, if you just take YouTube alone and think about all you can learn, on that platform is incredible. So don't say you can't learn it or you don't have the knowledge. Say, I need to go get the knowledge and take the steps to do that. And then the mistake gap that he talks about is, well, if it goes back to perfectionism. You know, we're never going to be perfect, but we can always expect and accept the fact that we're going to make mistakes. Now, the key to that is that we learn from it. You know, Einstein is supposed to have said that uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, if you don't learn from your mistakes and you keep doing them over and over and over again, that's not good for you. And, and, then, and then he talks about, you know, the inspiration gap. When are we going to have the inspiration to do what we need to do? It's kind of like, you know, one of the one of the cartoons I saw some years ago was this guy was sitting at his desk and he wasn't doing anything. And his boss walked up behind him and he said, why aren't you working? He said, well, I'm waiting for somebody to come along and motivate me. And he said, well, what if nobody ever shows up? Where's that motivation going to come from? Where's that inspiration going to come from? It's got to come from within us. And so we need to develop the habit of being inspired. Uh, believing in ourselves, understanding our why, and knowing what we're doing and why we're doing it. And finally, you know, we have to have some greater expectation for our lives because most people, you know, this is it. This is all I got. You know, I don't think there's going to be anything else. And, and they and they have no higher expectation than where they are. I was in that boat for a long, long time in my life. I once told a guy who was an uh, instructor at a school I attended who was working on his PhD, uh, he, he asked me a question. He said, Jim, where do you see yourself in the next five or 10 years? I said, I don't know. I think I've reached my max. And I told him why I felt that way. And he slammed his hand down on his desk. And he said, I don't want to ever hear that from your mouth again. And man, there is nothing. Your potential is so great. There is such an opportunity for you out there if you'll just put the things into action that you need to do. So we have to we have to step out, do what we need to do, put those bad habits behind us, focus on how we can improve and take the steps necessary to grow and become our best versions. Now I know I said a lot in a short period there, but but it, it, it's all about one thing. It's all about one thing, Yuri, and that's having the desire and the belief that there's more out there for you and that you're willing to put the bad habits aside and start developing and creating the good habits that will take you to the next level. Yes, absolutely. And then you said something really powerful. You talked about those gaps. And then you also told in the beginning that you transitioned to a new life, your new business, right? How, to, right. Transition, how to transition well? What were the gaps or a gap that you had to face in that transition? Yeah, and, and, and that's a great question, Yuri, because that's that's 
the hardest thing for me during that period of time was believing in myself. You know, and, and I, 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 I go back and I'm reminded that this mentor told me that I had the ability to do whatever I wanted to do, but I still had that lack of belief in myself. And it's a struggle even today for me, but I have people around me like you and a couple of other folks that you and I mentor with on a regular basis that continue to help me see the future and know that I have the opportunity and, and a gift to be able to go out and share with others. So, so for me, it was believing in myself. And of course, that's one of the, the main things that we have to deal with is to forget about that. You know, uh, biblically, you know, God has gifted us with all that we need to be the successes that we desire to be. If we'll just put our faith and trust in him and go do and use the gifts that he's blessed us with. And, and, and if he, so let me see if I can find it. I had another quote I was going to share with you here. In, in, in Psalm 37, because this fits right into what we're talking about. Psalm 37, 23 through 24. It says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fail for the Lord holds them up in their in his hands. So when I when I finally started paying attention and realizing that, hey, you just got to go out there and do it. And when I did, it turned everything around and my business took off. It took me about three years to get it going. So 2014, 15, 16, I think 2016 was when it finally really, really stepped out that I was able to, to see the fruits of my labor. So, but I stuck with it. I didn't quit. And, you know, and I had great mentors and, and I, I continue to, to listen to and focus on what other great thought leaders have to say to help me on my journey. Listen, I'm 72. I'm almost 73 years old. I still have a lot to do, and I'm not ready to throw in the towel. I love this idea when you say I have a lot to do. And another question comes to mind, like, like we are, we are always judging ourselves by where we are, by our age. Am I capable of doing this or that? And then you said something really powerful. I have a lot to do. do does our age influence our capability to, to reach something new in life? Only if we let it. It can impact us only in, in a, when I say that, regardless of where you are in your journey, regardless of your age, you have the potential to impact others. You can say, well, I'm just too young or I'm too old. So, so I had the opportunity to speak directly with John Maxwell about this because John is 75, I think. He's a couple of years older than me. And, and he he quickly told me, he said, yeah, you're, you're, we're older, which only means that we have to get going and do it quicker. He says, you just have to speed up the process. So, so Alex, you're at 21, 22 now. You, you have time, but you don't want to slow down. You want to continue to put the metal to the pedal and go as fast as you can to get the things you don't need to do so that when you get to my age, you can say, oh, man. Well done, good and faithful servant, you know, because you're putting forth the effort. It, well, because you'll say, well, I'll do that later. I'll do that when I get older. I'll wait. Listen, before you know it, you'll be Jim Hatchell's age. You say, what happened all the time? You know, and I have tried to live out my life in the fast lane. And I don't mean in the crazy side of the fast lane, but staying focused and going forward in everything that I do. And I've had a great, great life and great career. And I could easily say, I'm done. But that's not where I am, you know. And, and, I, and I know you're not there either. And, and I don't want you to think about because you're too young or like me, think about I'm too old because neither one of us fit into that mold. We are both uh, at a point in our lives where we have a, a great potential to impact the lives of many people. So 
yes, it can be an impact, but you can use it in a positive way, like exactly. you're doing. <laughs> exactly. And then you were, we were just talking about people as well. And then we have a small group and then we mentor each other. We share with each other. And then I want to ask you this question. How much do people influence our course of life? I, I can tell you that in my journey, there has been a handful of individuals that have shaped and molded and modeled where I am today, that have impacted where I am today. And they all, if they had not been in my life, I wouldn't be here talking with you because they made such a huge difference in my journey. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The first, the, the first one was, of course, my own father. My father always taught me one lesson. We were not that we were not the best father son relationships, but he gave me one lesson that I've always followed, and it's simple, simple, simply this fill all the squares. So, and what he was telling me then was, and, and this was before I knew anything about John Maxwell, but he was telling me to be intentional, to go out and do the things you need to do so that when the opportunity comes, you're ready. And so I lived out my life that way. And as a result, it paid huge dividends. One of my supervisor mentors, who had known me for my entire life, came to me one day and said, hey, Jim Hatchell, you have the potential to be a great leader, but you've got a flaw. He saw a blind spot that I didn't see. He identified that blind spot for me, helped me correct it, got the, the, the uh, help that I needed that turned my life around, that gave me the potential to reach the level that I reached. And there were many others, but, but uh, even you know while while we don't always get to face to face time with with John Maxwell but John Maxwell has been a huge mentor i've been i've been following john maxwell since 1998 and so he's been you know so i I've, I've, <laughs> I've learned a lot through his studies and his books uh, yuri is i learned so much from you and mike and paul it just helps me uh, as I think about how I deal with uh, the younger people that I coach and train, and, and you know that I coach and train uh, uh, many ages, as, as young as 20, 20 years old. And so, so, and, 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 and so because I have you guys that I can bounce things off of, it helps me. Mm -hmm. So Jim Rome says, and, and I'm, I'm not sure where the original saying came from, but I heard Jim Rome say that we are the average of the six people that we surround ourselves with. I have surrounded myself with very smart and helpful people. And, and that has paid huge dividends. One of the, one of the, the greatest lessons I learned was from uh, a guy who owned one of the largest insurance agencies here in, in my hometown. And I asked him one time, I said, Key, can you tell me what's the number one thing that you attribute to your success? And he said, I make Monday the best day of the week. You know, most of us say, well, I hate Monday. I don't want to be around <laughs> for Monday. But Key said, no, I make Monday the best day of the week. And he sold insurance. And he said he wouldn't leave the office until he sold at least one insurance policy on Monday. So his success and, and his and his mentoring paid huge dividends for me. Mm -hmm. So we need to use those. Find people who are smarter than you are and go learn from them. Absolutely. And then I, I can I can feel this benefit because we've been gathering together once in a while, and we can feel the power within this inner circle, right? Uh, yes. And then it's so important that we gather together. We get to know each other. And you were talking a little bit about your business in the beginning. And I know that a lot of people are struggling when they transition to a new lifestyle, a new beginning. Sometimes they don't even know what kind of purpose, what purpose they have or the way to go in this new beginning. So they, they feel stuck, lost. Sometimes people are saying 
to them, you can't, you are not good enough. Sometimes they question their value. So with your business, what are some of the ways that you help people uh, discover their purpose, discover that they have value and they can transition well? The one thing that, that I do is I ask a lot of questions, Yuri, because I have to get them to think about what it is that they need to change, what it is that they're desiring to, to accomplish and where they desire to go. I could say, you know, I could go in there and I could say, you need to do A, B, C, D, and E, but that's what Jim Hatchell might need to do. I need to ask them the questions and help them discover their path, what they need to do. And, and I do that through a, a number of different ways. You know, there are lots of processes out there. And, and I do, I, I like to do a personal SWOT analysis with all of my new clients. It, it, it just takes them through asking them, okay, what are your strengths? And here's the thing about that. A lot of them can't even identify what their strengths are. So we really have to dive into that. And then I use the DISC uh, uh, personality assessment to help them with that process. And then, you know, we, we do that. We do that. Uh, that um, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, uh, what are your opportunities and what are your threats? What are the things that are holding you back? What is, what's, your, what's your number one thing that gets between you and where you're trying to go? But it goes all the way back to the beginning. You, know, you, gotta, you gotta understand where you're trying to go. And I fall back on some of Simon Sinek's uh, understanding your why. So I do a lot of things, but the, the key thing is trying to help people understand who they are, where they are, and, and where they wanna go. Because if you don't have a vision, if you don't have vision, you know, what's the, what's the Bible said? The people without vision will perish. So if we don't have vision for our own lives, then how can we go anywhere? So we start off with that SWOT analysis, that personal SWOT analysis, identify what people uh, see for themselves and try to craft, help them craft uh, a journey for themselves so they have a clear vision of where they want to go and understand why and understand their passion and their purpose. So that's the, that, I mean, that's it in a nutshell, Alex. And, and I could go yes. into that a whole lot more. But <laughs> Absolutely. I want to kind of keep it brief there. So, <laughs> yes. And that I will definitely share for those watching if you are interested in getting to know his business and, uh, and Jim, you, I'm going to share the link. Okay. Uh, in the description and and then your wife wrote something and his wife <laughs> so that means your wife impacts your life as well uh, oh, abs how, you know, <laughs> absolutely she is she, hey listen yeah. she is a huge supporter uh she's she's been in s some of our calls and some of our uh, masterminds as well so she is tremendous i mean you talk about somebody who uh is always there to lift me, inspire me, and keep me motivated. She is definitely uh, the point of the spear there. She makes sure that I, I stay focused on what's right and where I need to go for us and for our family. So, yes, I uh, think your first, you, you, your, your first, your first team player is your spouse. Absolutely. <laughs> right? absolutely. Yes. yes, exactly. Well, uh, we're getting to the end of this interview, this session today. And my final question to you is, as we get into 2023, how can, how can people, how can people make the most out of this next year? What's your message to them? Oh, wow. Gosh. The first thing we have to do is we have to take a, take a moment and stop and reflect. Let's, let's, let's reflect on this past year and then and, and ask ourselves a couple of questions. What did I do good? What did I do bad? Where do I need to make improvements? And where do I want to see myself at the end of 2023? And if we ask ourselves, and, and that's just four simple questions, you can take those and you can break those down to even more a detailed information. And there are a lot of great 
books out there that provide great resources to help you in that process. But take some time to reflect on this past year. Ask yourself some hard questions. And then sit down and have a planning session with yourself about where you want to go. And then surround yourself with people who can help you get there. Mm -hmm. And if we can do that, I mean, our lives will be so much better and the future will be so much brighter for all of us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. And so, Jim, I'm really, I'm really uh, grateful for this opportunity to, to listen to you, to learn from you. And we know that today we learned a lot. Be courageous in this new beginning. Uh, get to know other people, be with pe uh, surround yourself with people that will lift you up instead of, uh, of make, make you feel down or that you are not capable. We learned the importance of, of me mentor, mentoring others, of being mentored by others as well. So I feel so grateful for this opportunity. So do you want to say anything else before we close this session? Yuri, I tell you, you set an example for others. And, and I would encourage anybody that's listening, regardless of where you are on your journey, Yuri can be a very valuable asset to you. He's a tremendous coach. He's a great interviewer. Uh, and he, even at, at my age, I learn from Yuri. And, and I appreciate you and I appreciate your allowing me to be a part of your journey. And, and I just wish all of you much, much success in the remaining days of 2022, <laughs> but more importantly, in the upcoming year of 2023. And I challenge you to make 2023 your best year yet. And I look forward to seeing you the next time. Yes. Yeah, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Thank for those who are watching and will be watching later on. Enjoy your holiday, new year, and please be, bla be blessed. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>